Hi, i 4 here. Does the Alpha Rise U30 need TL smoothers? So, looking at our driver, which is the A4988 stepper driver. Don't worry about this, this is a breakout board. Our chip is actually built into the main motherboard. Going down, I believe that uh, we've got a 16 step resolution on the U30 just by some calculations that I've done before, which was like uh, to do like the pulse, um, the, the steps of the pulse is 200. I managed to work out how many steps um, and then looked at the input in the settings on the actual U30 and all these seems to add up perfectly right so we've got the 80 steps per millimeter on the X and Y 400 steps per millimeter on the Z all these calculations uh, worked out given the thread pitch etc etc so what we've actually got is the um, 16 step enabled on our driver and the driver drivers um, via M, MS1, MS2 and MS3 depending on which ones are connected. We cannot connect or disconnect them. That's something that's done internally. Um, so then going down how to control it, all this here. I found this really handy web page, which is great. I'd recommend going through it with you. It's in French, but Google kindly translates it for you. This guy called Yo goes through everything on the tr on, on working out your equations and whether all this inputs are correct in the actual software that you can adjust on the U30. Now the good thing about the U30 is you can adjust some of the parameters in there. Um, have a 3D, pr 3D printers I believe are quite locked down. Going down a bit further what you can find by looking at your board is the two resistors. On here it's, it's 200 ohm. There's two of them. The U30, the, the board that I'm using currently, two 100 resistors. And also on this forum, they've um, they've kindly worked out the equations that you need if when if and when you're going to set your VREF on your drivers. And to do so, they've even given in um, what they call an INOM. Now that's kind of like a bit of a, a safety net. This is our driver, the A4988. Um, it's got an IMAX maximum um, amperage of 2 amps going in. We have our resistance is um, on the 100, so we're going to be looking down this bit here. Now, amperage of the stepper drivers is 1.5 amps per phase. We then have 71% of that 1.5, which leaves us to 1.6 amps. Now, what this is going to do is just give us a bit of a safety margin, a safety net. Now you look across and that's 0.85 voltage. That's what you need to set your little uh, trim pot on. Um, and obviously look into how to do this. I'm not doing a tutorial of how to do it. Surely plus there's plenty of videos online about it. Um, but be careful, um, obviously you don't want to start dragging a metallic screwdriver and catching into other components on your board. So 85 was the... Um, X, Y, and Z axis. And this is kind of along the lines of what Alpha Alpha Rise um, replied to me in an email, saying around the eight mark. They also said it is a, like about the one volt VREF for the extruder. So I've set mine to about 1.5. So that's how you, how you set that. But I seriously recommend jumping on this for him. I'll put the link in the bottom. So we have a Zetchia Coyote King. And as you can see here, he's got like the three stepper drivers. Now the DRV8825 is the one that really needs the TL smoothers and you'll see a massive improvement from it. The TMC2130 is actually like a really good driver. Here you can see the A4988 with the TL smoothers. And there's a slight bit of difference. So these are two prints that I originally printed off. Obviously, you could argue that they're not in the same filament, so it might not be a fair test. I'm not too sure if you can see. There is actually a very slight difference. Now the one in the blue was the printed version without the TL smoothers, and the one in the pink was with the addition of the TL smoothers, and this one I've done these two was with the um, eight diode configuration.
So the one with the pink, you can't see in it as much the little lines going up and over here. So originally this, this was a, um, uh, a tester for testing to see um, if you do need TL smoothers, but they were quite big and took a bit of time. So then I found another thingy verse and I've managed to print off a load of these smaller ones. So to start off with, I printed two of these. Now these are actually lined slightly off of the axis. axes. I believe they're kind of sunk similar to that, or maybe like that. And then what that does is, is just slightly offsets it by so many degrees, just so you can find this um, this little phenomenon, phenomenon, phenomenon. And um, as you can see, hopefully, if I was to move it around like this, you can see the uh, little circles. It doesn't really make that much of a difference. Now, if the U30 was using the DVR8825 stepper motor driver, then it will probably be a lot more of a problem. But this is only very slight. So I brought the um, 8-chip TL smoothers. Um, and if you look at the back of these, you can definitely see some some diagonal lining on there. And if you just look on the back of these with the eight diodes per chip. And then I saw these. So these are the four diode ones and I quite like these because they come in like a heat shrinked sort of little protective bit. So you've got no rows of it. Um, anything touching it and sparking and shorting out. So when I've done the tests on these, which is just a four, for some reason I've done two and then done another two, I think because I had this line going down here, right around there, and cleans my rails, because I've been doing quite a bit of printing, and that seemed to have got rid of that line. There's still a tiny little bit of line there. But it got rid of it. Um, so whether there's a little lump of something in there, I'm not too sure. But the, this virtually got rid of the the, the the sort of ringing again, but not to the extent of uh, what the eight chip diodes did. You still can see a little bit of ringing. And what I had a problem with these was is that I tend to have more artifacts, more like spluttering going on here. This was all using the same G code, like a few more artifacts going on here and on the back of there by using these ones. Now the only difference between these ones and the other ones are these these diodes are a bit bigger. Um, they can take more of a higher current through them. Not that it's, it, the current or the voltage is going to be getting anywhere near it in our situation, but that they've got the bigger drivers or the bigger diodes on there. Um, and then I thought it might be an interesting test um, because I needed to update the firmware and then print off, and these are the FU ones, the like firmware update that is, update the firmware and again you still can see ringing in there, like if that was going to make a difference to anything, but it didn't. So eventually what I have gone with, I've gone with like um, obviously the 8 chip diodes, the TL smoothers, the 8 chip, the 8 diode TL smoothers. Um, I readjusted the voltages on the drivers. So I made this, now this is just a prototype, it's not the same as the one I've uploaded. Um, the one I've uploaded, I've changed this solid bit here onto this side. Um, if you imagine that like, on the eight chip ones, it's kind of like this sort of size. And that's what I, I was kind of had high hopes for these ones because they were like a lot smaller and a lot thinner. But they're about roughly that side of the board and that just then slots into there. And then the diodes are this side and I couldn't put them around this way because then when this is attached to the power supply unit for a couple of zip ties here and here, these are then slot in here and here and here and here. And, here. and um, uh, how the wiring is, it, the uh, the other ones come out here, not out the top either. So it had to kind of come back in and around. So it's getting a bit tight. So I adjusted it, 
so it could go that way so then the wiring could come in this way which was a lot more easier and you wasn't getting so much of a twist on the wiring now hopefully you can see it there's uh, two little notches there and there and on the eight eight diode ones there's a couple of little mounting holes and, and they just clip into there and by bending these back opens it up plonk them in and it holds them in there really nice and tight attach the side of the PSU and any heat that's in the diodes and can come up and it's free to move and escape they're not encapsulated in anything and they're quite nicely safe when you are installing this I really do advise you to obviously turn off the power supply unit unplug it and just make sure there's no charge in the capacitors leave it for a little while before poking cable ties zip ties in there and when you do do it to poke them into line them up in the other holes just just to bend the zip tie three or four times a nice little pointy bend on the end when you thread that through the metal hole bit you can sort of turn it at a bit of an angle and then try and poke the thing up it's a bit, it's a bit tricky but yeah don't do it when it's on now the big question is should you have TL smoothers on the U30 well you don't really need them. I mean the, the driver, the A4988, is quite a good driver. So just to summarise all this up, um, no, I don't think it does. I think any of the salmon skinning that's on there, if you are going to sand the model down, you're going to sand away that anyway. Um, bits do fit together quite well, even with the, the slight salmon skinning on there. I've already got the TL smoothers. Um, and so I'm going to keep them on. I don't see a reason why not to. A lot of people have been using TL smoothers for a little while now and they've reported no problems. If you had a better driver, then I see the reason not to use them sort of thing. But the, the A4688 driver, if I remember correctly, is a kind of me mediocre driver. It appears to be okay. And... Um, the TL smoothers is just going to give it a final little boost, I think. I think the more important thing is to adjust the voltage uh, VREF on your drivers via the adjust adjustable trim pot. I'd say that's probably the most important thing to check, but obviously be careful on how to do that. Obviously, I think if you're printing things like a vase or vars, whatever you want to call it, um, and you're doing more of a decorative print, the TL smoothers might be something you might want to purchase. They are cheap as chips. It's not going to do you no harm. Can't see why not. Um, if you're like myself, do a lot of 3D printing and it's more for um, you know, useful kind of things that need to work but don't need to look pretty, then I don't, I don't really see the point of buying them as such. But 48 quid. Um, the improvements are noticeable, so it's kind of like a, a, a cheap mod, I'd say. So um, I'll leave it up to you, I'll kind of like 50-50. So yeah, I feel free, everyone out.